Aloha everyone. The appearance of the water pond or possible new lake at the bottom of the Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater has generated numerous questions and rejuvenated interest in the Kilauea volcano. In this video, I am going to attempt to address some of the queries surrounding this new phenomena. We will go through all of this starting from when the pond first was observed up to the most current information available at the time of this recording. So let's get to it. The first bit of water, which wasn't much more than a giant puddle, was first observed at the bottom of the Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater at the summit of Kilauea on July 25th, 2019. The discovery credit goes to the helicopter pilot of the flight conducting the LIDAR survey of the Kilauea summit on that day. On August 1st, new investigations were made using telephoto aerial photographs of the crater, which exposed the puddle had become a pond within just one short week. The left image is from July 25th observation and the right image is from August 1st. USGS has placed an X next to the same rock in both photos to show growth comparison of the pool. HVO geologist on August 2nd was able to gain a vantage point on the ground to view the growing pond at the bottom of the crater. This new viewing location will aid the scientists in collecting data over the changes that seem to be occurring daily. However, some viewers have asked if they can see the pond from the crater viewing locations in the park. The answer is no. Due to continuing volcanic hazards, this area of the caldera rim is not open to the public. During the August 3rd fieldwork survey, the geologists were able to take advantage of the new viewing location. Using a modern rangefinder, they were able to measure the pond's approximate distance beneath the crater rim. Measurements indicate the distance is plus minus 2,044 feet or 623 meters. Using a potent telephoto lens, they were also able to verify there are presently two areas of ponded water in the crater bottom, the most massive of the ponds measuring approximately 36 feet or 11 meters in diameter, with the more modest pool measuring a diameter of 20 to 23 feet or 6 to 7 meters. August 4th brought with it a new and astonishing discovery, a third, yet smaller pool materialized between the original two. It would seem this is visible evidence that this phenomenon continues to grow. I can only speculate, but I think this is the day that geologists comprehended that the occurrence of water in the crater was something significant and possibly unprecedented. It was at this time I asked myself, is the water hot? I guess the USGS had the same question. On August 5th, they brought out the thermal camera to the vantage point and set it up on the rim of the crater. The device was able to determine that the temperature of the pond was roughly 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. So the answer to the question is apparently, yes, the water is hot. Which brings me to an important side note. If you appreciate this type of content, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up button. If you would also like to know when new content is available, you will want to click the subscribe button, plus tap the bell icon and select all notifications. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Links to all that and more is in the video description below. On August 6, the daily observation showed water levels had risen and that the two smaller ponds had begun to merge, which formed an irregularly shaped perimeter. This new pool is elongated and has nearly connected with the main body of water. The next day, August 7th, showed that the two ponds of water continue to exist sequestered from each other. However, this distance has decreased to approximately 10 to 20 feet or 3 to 6 meters. Field observations for August 8th revealed something very interesting and exciting. The two ponds had finally merged and it appears something is producing an agitation of the water's surface. There are three plausible explanations for this. First being, it is escaping gases from beneath the surface. Two, the water is boiling due to underground heating. Or finally three, it is both escaping gases 
and the water is boiling. I would think it is most likely it is just the first possibility, only because if the water is boiling, then one of two things must be occurring. The first is the dissolved minerals or chemicals have lowered the boiling point of the water, which I think is possible. Or secondly, the magma has risen and increased the temperature of the water. Since the previous temperature reading indicated the water was 158 degrees Fahrenheit and there are no other indications that magma has risen, I believe it is more presumable the agitation is just escaping gases from underneath the water. Moving on to August 9th, the daily check on the water pond once again demonstrated it was expanding and becoming more profound. The level of water continues to increase slowly with each passing day. There additionally appears to be a color variation between regions of the pond. That could symbolize different locations that have different water chemistry, though that is seemingly impossible to determine without customary water samples. Now we have arrived on August 10th. And for those that watched the latest edition of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report, please note that this was the last day presented in that video. Observations on this day continue to exhibit visual evidence that the water level is still gradually increasing and by looking at this photographic observation between August 7th and August 10th, the striking differences articulate the mutations dramatically, which gives credence to the fact the water has unquestionably deepened. Between August 11th and August 18th, the pond continues to evolve and deepen at a gradual but consistent rate. Short of that fact, there have been no significant changes in the coloring of the water or surrounding environment. So this will make for an excellent opportunity to consider what all of this means. Starting with what I believe is the question that is on most of our minds, what is the origin of the water? The answer to that is one or both of two possible sources. The first being what appears as a common opinion that it is rainwater. The second is, of course, the next most obvious source, and that is groundwater. I will not say that rainwater has not contributed to the building of the water pond in the crater. However, I believe it is a minor donor. I think the preponderance of the water has seeped in from the local water table. Here is why I believe this. The local water table is about 1,936 feet or 590 meters in elevation which does vary slightly over time. This measurement comes from a deep hole drilled in 1973, approximately half a mile or 800 meters south of the Halemau Mau crater. As for the floor of the crater, it is 1,706 feet or 520 meters in elevation. That puts it about 230 feet or 70 meters below the nearby water table. When you then add the fact the magma has retreated down the column and is no longer capable of chasing away the water, it would stand to reason that the water would begin to pool at the bottom of the crater, especially since the base is below the water table and the heat from the magma is no longer controlling it. It was this dynamic at play that was very concerning during the 2018 eruption. The geologist and most everyone else was observant of the possibility that groundwater could come rushing in as the magma started to rescind down the column, generating massive steam-driven explosions. Thankfully, that did not happen. The next question I would like to address is one of great importance, in my opinion. If the volcano starts to erupt again, how will it interact with the presence of the water? It is hard to answer this one with any certainty. However, I can speculate what could happen based on what the possible conditions might be at the time of an eruption. Let me define the variables at play. 1. The speed at which magma rises in the column. 2. The gas content of the magma. 3. The volume of water that has collected. The way these three factors can play out together creates a few different possibilities. Let's say at the time of a pending eruption, the magma is slowly rising because it is less gassy and the pond of water has become very large and deep. I believe what we could expect under these conditions is to see a consistent boiling off of the water pond itself. Now, as the magma gets closer to the surface, I would think the water would be gone and we, and we would see much more off-gassing at the summit. Finally, magma would breach the rocky summit pit and a new lava pool, pond, or lake would emerge. 
if we change the gas content of the rising magma and make it gassier, then it would ascend towards the surface much more rapidly, such as it does during a fountain eruption. The speed of magma movement would not allow sufficient time for any water to boil off that is in the way. These particular conditions would allow for a direct interaction between the magma or lava and the collected water. Gassy magma or lava is more fragmented, which provides for greater heat transference to the water, and that makes for an explosive meeting of the two forces. What happens is, the water turns to steam in a flash and creates enormous pressures very rapidly, and this creates the dynamic that can produce incredible steam-powered eruptive explosions. There is a third possibility which I don't think I have heard discussed by the USGS personnel or anywhere else. To build the scenario, we will say the magma is less gassy and slowly rising, and the pond of water has grown into a large pond or small lake. In the first scenario, the water boils off with no explosive activity. However, in this version, that rising magma and the accompanying earthquakes cause cracks and voids to open under the pond before it can boil off. If the water were to find a quick path through these cracks and voids, down to the magma, then we absolutely could expect a highly explosive event to occur. I would propose, based on these three probabilities, that this pool or perhaps potential future lake will be a significant indicator that magma is returning to the summit, which suggests we need to scrutinize this water rather carefully for the subsequent months to years. For illustration, if the water was to commence boiling slowly and the boiling became more pronounced as time advanced, I would say this is a visible indication that magma could be advancing closer to the surface. Now, if the level of the water began to drop very rapidly, this would be a clear indication that we should become extremely concerned. I think why to be concerned was unquestionably outlined in the third possible scenario proposed earlier. Finally, if the pool continues to expand and deepen, I would say this might symbolize that the magma has not changed or perhaps even receded a little more. Finally, the last important question. Has this phenomenon occurred at any time in the past? I do believe the answer to that question is no, at least according to the written scientific records available. However, I have heard there is a possible Hawaiian story that may mention water in some significant form on the summit in the past, though I have not been able to find any reference to any account of such a tale. Also, the USGS has volcanic glass specimens that show evidence that lava and water have interacted on the Mauna before, which does indicate these types of steam explosions have appeared in the past. I believe it is safe to say that this type of phenomenon most likely has occurred many times in the past, so perhaps this could be the first or second time humans have witnessed it. After saying all this, I would like to make one thing completely clear. There is no one, not even myself, that can say with any absolute conviction as to precisely what this means or what we can expect from it in the future. I generally hope you enjoyed this presentation and would like to say mahalo for watching. Please be sure to check out the links in the description below, click that subscribe button and bell icon, and don't forget to show that thumbs up button some aloha. Until next time, you have a spectacular morning, afternoon, or evening.